Welcome back to the second part of section 2.5. Example 7 says that we're given the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25 and that we have to find, remember this notation right here means find the second derivative. Once we've done that, we're going to evaluate both the first and second derivatives at the point negative 3, 4. So for the first derivative, we're going to differentiate and get 2x plus 2y dy dx, and that equals 0 because the derivative of the constant is 0. Now when we go to isolate our dy dx, we get 2y dy dx equals a negative 2x. And now when I go to isolate dy dx, I'm going to divide everything by 2y, and we get dy dx is equal to a negative 2x divided by 2y, which is really equal to a negative x divided by y. So this right here gives me my first derivative. And let's just go ahead real quick and evaluate it at the point negative 3, 4. So I'm going to plug in a negative 3 and for x and divide that by 4. And a negative negative then is going to give us a positive. And we end up with 3, 4. So this right here is the first derivative evaluated at our coordinate point. Now, to do our second derivative, we're going to take the derivative of the previous derivative. And with that, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So I have a negative, and then I'm going to go to the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And the bottom is y, so that's going to give me dy dx divided by the bottom squared. And this is all equal to the second derivative, or d squared y divided by dx squared is kind of what it looks like. Okay, now the nice thing with this is I don't have to go and try to isolate this dy dx right here. And I, it, it's really going to be hard to do that because I have this right here and this right here. So I can't, it, it's going to be real difficult to get this by itself and then still to be able to evaluate it at a function of, in terms of x and y which is the coordinate point that we were given. So what I can do is I can continue to solve this or simplify it and say that this is really equal to y minus x. Now up above we were given that dy dx was equal to this right here. That's actually what I solved my first derivative for. So I can replace this dy dx with that negative x divided by y. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to divide that by y squared. And when we simplify this, we end up with y minus x squared. And actually it's a negative negative, which makes it a plus, divided by y, divided by y squared. And we need to simplify this because we have a complex fraction. So to simplify our numerator of our fraction, I'm going to get a common denominator. So that's going to give me y squared divided by y plus x squared divided by y. And all of that's being divided by y squared. I can add my numerator straight across. So we have y squared plus x squared divided by y, and then I'm going to be dividing that whole thing by y squared. Well, dividing by y squared is really the same as multiplying by 1 divided by y squared. So now when I multiply straight across, we're left with y squared plus x squared, and y times y squared is y cubed. So this is your second derivative of the function. Now we have to evaluate that function at the point 
negative 3, 4. So when we go and plug that in, we have 4 squared plus a negative 3 squared divided by 4 cubed. And 4 squared is 16 plus negative 3 squared, which is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. And 4 to the 3rd is 64. And I forgot to bring my negative. The negative that I had right here, I need to bring that down with everything. So my final answer then should also include that negative. So I end up with a negative 25 64 as my final answer. And the last example is example 8, and we're going to find the tangent line to the graph given by x squared times the quantity of x squared plus y squared equals y squared at the given point. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative, and we have the derivative of a product. Now you can actually treat this as a product, or because you only have a monomial here, you can go ahead and distribute, and I think it'd probably be easier if we distribute that. So that's going to give us x to the fourth plus x squared y squared equals y squared. And then I think I'm also going to bring my y squared term over, which gives me x to the fourth plus x squared y squared minus y squared equals zero. Now, I, th I think if you do this, it will be a little bit easier to isolate your dy dx term. If this is something that you don't do now, you can still do it later on. So now that we have our, ver or our equation set, let's go ahead and take the derivative. So the derivative of x to the fourth will give us 4x cubed. Plus, I still have a product here, so I'm going to take the first and multiply it by the derivative of the second, which is going to be 2y dy dx plus the second, which is y squared, times the derivative of the first, and then minus 2y dy dx, and set that equal to 0. Then I'm going to get my dy dx terms by themselves, which is this term and this term, and I'll push everything else to the other side. And if I factor a dy dx term out, you'll see that you have 2x squared y minus 2y times dy dx, and that's going to equal a negative 4x cubed plus, oops, I'm sorry, minus, because I'm moving it to the other side, Two x y squared, and now to get dy dx by itself, I'm going to divide by this term here, and we get dy dx is equal to a negative four x cubed minus two x y divided by two x squared y minus 2y. Now that we found the equation, we're going to plug in the coordinate point, uh, square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So this is going to give us a negative 4 times the square root of 2 divided by 2 cubed minus, oops, yeah, minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 squared times the square root of 2 over 2 minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And when you go ahead and solve all this, you'll see that you get a value of 3. So now if I go into point slope form, I have y minus the square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 
3 times the quantity of x minus the square root of 2 over 2, and I would probably leave it just like that. And now for our fun fact.